Hello friends. So in the previous uh, lecture session, we have uh, actually <coughs> derived the EMF equation of a two winding transformer. Okay, and we saw that the EMF equation was equal to 4.44 F phi m into n. So if you are taking the primary side or the n one or the first side, so it will become e one equal to 4.44 F phi m into n one. Or if you are taking the secondary side, it will become e two is equal to 4.44 F phi m into n two. And after deriving the EMF equation, we had another lecture on the observations of the EMF equation. Okay, so with all this done, let us uh, do a numerical, a couple of numericals today, so that you understand the concept uh, in a much better manner. So <coughs> today we are having the numerical which has an iron core transformer that is working at a maximum flux density of 0.8 Weber per meter square. Okay. its core is to be replaced with silicon steel now silicon steel is a much more superior magnetic material as compared to a normal iron core uh, iron which is used as a core uh, all these things we will uh, discuss about a silicon steel a little bit in uh, more detail when we discuss about the constructional features of the transformer okay so you can clearly see the silicon steel is uh, working at a maximum flux density of 1.2 weber per meter square clearly it is a magnetically superior material because it is having more uh, Uh, flux per uh, unit area so if the total flux is to be maintained due to the same value okay this is an important by the total flux phi is to be maintained same what is the reduction in the volume as a percentage of the original volume i have already told you in the previous video if you use a superior magnetic material you can bring down the area of cross section of the material so we saw that if you had increased it by Uh, if you have uh, increased it by say four times, if you are by using a, a material which is four times magnetic superior, the area also reduced by four. So it is the same concept we are you going to use in this numerical. Just we will have some values. Okay. Another thing that they have given is that the frequency and volts per turn are same in both cases. So basically, you have to find the volume reduction in terms of percentages. Okay. And frequency and volts per turn are same in both cases. Okay. So now we will write the EMF equation again. Uh, there is no wrong in writing equations multiple times because each time you write the equation on your own it gets etched inside your mind so make sure that you write the equations every time you do a numerical okay so e is equal to 4.44 f into <coughs> now this phi i will write it as bm into an okay an is the net cross sectional area of the uh, magnetic core this also we will discuss what is net and what is gross cross sectional area when we discuss the constructional features so anyway for the time being uh, let us uh, think that it is an and into n okay now <clears throat> what they have given is that the emf per turn is constant value and the frequency is also same in both the cases that means frequency is constant so if i just write e by n is equal to 4.44 f uh, Into B M into A N, right? So F is constant, E by N is constant, four point four is constant. That means naturally the product B M into N should be constant in both the cases. Okay. So let us take the first case here. So let me take the B M of the iron core. Okay. So B M I C. Let me call it as B M one. So that is equal to point eight Weber per meter square, right? And uh, B M of the silicon steel. Is equal to let us call it as B M two, okay. So that is one point two Weber per meter square, okay. So what they have given is that B M one into A N one is equal to B M two into A N two. So that is what we have found out from here because E by N is constant, frequency is constant. Naturally, this product also has to be a constant value. Okay, I hope you understand that. So let us substitute the values. So the first value here is point eight into A N one. Is equal to B M two is one point two into A N two, right? So you will get a relationship between A N one and A N two here. So A N two divided by A N one, which area? This is the area of cross section of the core. So this value is equal to point eight divided by one point two. Okay. So this value is around zero point six seven. Okay. This is zero point six seven. So I can write as percentage change. The percentage reduction, or the percentage change, or the percentage reduction will be A N two minus A N one divided by. They have asked in a percentage of original volume, right? So original volume was, or you want to find it in the original volume. So 
uh, area of cross section also we are taking for the original uh, structure which was the first case so an2 is nothing but from this relation you can see it is 0.67 into an1 right so this is 0.67 an1 minus an1 divided by an1 right so this is equal to so if i multiply this by 100 i will get in percentage so this is going to be minus 33 percentage what does this minus sign indicate it indicates that the ne the net cross section area has decreased by using a superior magnetic material okay so the percentage reduction is equal to 33 percentage okay the percentage reduction is 33 percentage the question is not to find the uh, area but it is to find the volume right so volume is nothing but area into length right it is area into length now in the question they have not mentioned anything as such of the length but they have told that you are replacing the core by a um, what you are replacing the old core by a new core that means the winding length etc should be the same so we can <coughs> it is very safe to assume that this length has to be maintained constant of the core okay the area is reducing but the length is same so you can clearly see that means the volume of the material because length we are assuming to be constant is proportional to the area right that means the reduction in volume so vn2 minus vn1 divided by vn1 okay will be same as the reduction in area of cross section right because uh, we are uh, saying that the length is constant and this an2 minus an1 uh, divided by an1 into 100 this was found to be 33 percentage so therefore here uh, because they have not uh, given much information of the length and we can assume that there is a direct replacement of the core the length of the core is assumed this the constant so in that case the volumetric change is same as the uh, change in area of cross section so the answer for this question is that the reduction in the volume is 33 percentage okay the reduction in volume is 33 percentage that means the transformer has become more compact okay so that is one thing so the next uh, part is uh, another uh, conclusion that we have uh, derived in the emf equation so we saw that the emf equation was 4.44 f phi m right into n1 right now i told you if the winding resistance is very small the applied voltage so let me just take it as even winding voltage uh, if, if the sorry the winding resistance is very small that means the applied voltage is almost same as the uh, voltage drop across the uh, winding right so i told you that means the flux phi m will be proportional to v1 by f right v1 by f. so this is the concept that we are going to use here so what they have given is that there is a transformer a 200 by 100 volt transformer 50 hertz trans so the rated uh, frequency of operation is 50 hertz it is to be excited at 40 hertz from the 100 volt side okay so for the exciting current to be constant what should be the applied voltage okay so this is the case when i told you that when the frequency is reduced when the frequency of operation is reduced the flux value will increase okay and the flux value is increased the transformer may go into deep saturation so to avoid that we reduce the voltage also correspondingly so that is what they are asking in this question you are reducing the frequency to 40 hertz but to keep uh, flux maximum constant what should be the applied voltage okay that means in this question they are telling that v1 by f should be a constant value right v1 by f should be a constant that means if you are reducing frequency to 40 hertz the voltage also has to be reduced to some value so i can write that v1 divided by f1 okay will be equal to v1 dash divided by <coughs> f1 dash where v1 dash and the f1 dash are the new applied voltage and the new applied frequency so that means now you are applying it in which side they have told you that it is up going to be applied in the 100 volts okay so v1 will be 100 that is the given condition and uh, f1 that is the rated frequency is 50 hertz this is the normal operation but you are changing it to 40 hertz here f1 dash is equal to 40 hertz and for that what will be the new value of voltage to be applied so this case v1 dash will be equal to 100 into 40 divided by 50 and this value will be equal to 80 volts okay so if you reduce the frequency from 50 to 40 to maintain the flux to a constant value you have to reduce the applied voltage to 
80 volts okay rather than applying 100 volts the transformer may go to deep saturation so you apply 80 volts the transformer will be in its normal working flux or the flux which was in the previous condition so with this two numericals i think you might have got a little bit insight about the emf equation of the transformer so if you like this video please like share and subscribe the channel please do recommend these videos with your friends and anyone who is having difficulty in understanding the topics in electrical engineering because this channel has multiple courses like uh, engineering circuit analysis dc machines and uh, synchronous machines is over now and now we are running transformers so till i see you in the next video it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you